morning, everybody, and welcome to CEO Chat. Uh, my name is Al Sini. I'm Joe Asabendi. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I do. And we have, a, we have a great guest. We just great. spent, uh, had a spirited half hour mm -hmm. talking with uh, Taryn Abrahams. I want to make sure I have this right. Empower Behavioral Services. Yes, you got that right. And um, welcome. Thank you so much oh, for having so, me. It's so great to have you on Thank the program. Thank you. What a pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to start with what I think is the golden question for you. And that is, there is a difference between a positive workplace environment mm -hmm. where everybody's on point and working toward a common goal and a negative workplace environment where things could go wrong, and we yes. discussed that a little bit. Mm -hmm. How do you make the shift from what could be a negative environment to a positive environment? Well, to me, a positive workplace environment is a workplace where people feel comfortable to come to work. Mm -hmm. Not only comfortable, they feel safe, mm -hmm. right? We sometimes, oftentimes, spend more time with our work family than we do with our personal family. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really important to have a workplace environment that fosters healthy interaction healthy communication, and that employees have been armed with the right skills to mm -hmm. be able to address issues that may come up in the workplace. Because the reality is, you put a bunch of people together in a workplace, there will be interpersonal issues um, from time to time. Right, so arming the employees with the, with the necessary skill set to be able to address the behaviors as they come uh, up, to is, me, is yeah. an important piece to having a healthy workplace it, environment. It's, it's so important. Conflict is unavoidable, but negative personal yes. conflict is avoidable. And you offer training solutions that help people build that kind of an environment. Maybe you can outline those for us? Absolutely. So the core of my business is really to help companies create a workplace culture mm -hmm. that employees can feel comfortable and safe coming to. Mm -hmm. um, specifically in talking about interpersonal issues within the workplace, as well as minimizing workplace harassment. A lot of the work that I do is working with management specifically to help create a workplace culture that supports open communication, transparency, and accountability. Oh, that's great. Now, yeah. a lot of people think training is a bunch of PowerPoint slides and uh, yeah, yeah. the usual well, boring. a lot of them work. are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, a lot but, of them are. But, and, and so I think it's really important, while, while you do have training offerings, it's really more of a comprehensive program to make that cultural change that we talked about some of which is yes. education. Yes. But, there there, are, yes. but learning is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I think it's how you deliver the information is really impactful. There mm -hmm. are a lot of companies out there uh, that offer online training courses. Um, a lot of companies offer face-to-face -face training. But a lot of it is primarily focused on one particular thing, mm -hmm. compliancy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Helping the company check that box um, to satisfy their state law requirements to provide harassment training. Mm. But it doesn't really take the conversation beyond compliancy. Mm -hmm. And I, I highlight that because with the Me Too movement swirling around our country, as much as the Me Too movement is, has be provided a positive platform for victims to speak up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it has created a lot of murky water and a lot of gray areas for a lot of people in the workplace, specifically men. Mm -hmm. And I feel like our training uh, companies and our training courses not only should help companies get compliant, but the conversation should really also be focused on addressing some of these insecurities that mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are feeling in the workplace. And well, just because a company doesn't perceive they have problems doesn't mean they don't, they don't have them. Well, I'm glad you bring that up. Right, the biggest so myth. Mind you, I'm glad you brought no, that up. <laughs> thank you, Joe. No company is immune to harassment. Right. Um, uh -huh. Even if you work for a small, privately owned company or a family business of mm -hmm. cl close knit individuals, mm -hmm. no, no company is immune to harassment. It can happen anywhere, anywhere. whether you're a small right. company or a large private company, a large public company. Excuse uh -huh. me. Right. And you and you work in both spaces. I work mm -hmm. in both spaces, and and the work that I do is very much custom on the client's needs. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the training companies that are out there offer very cookie cutter sort of module templates, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they sort of just give you what they've created. I create something new every single time I meet with and I work with a client. It can be, if, if I have a, recently, I just worked with a company, they wanted me to create a workshop that not only addresses workplace harassment, mm -hmm. but workplace bullying as okay. well. well. And they also wanted me to include a conversation about increasing emotional intelligence in the workplace. I really believe our training should be geared and custom specifically to the needs of the client. That's the best way to create real change. So, so the first, an engagement with, with, with Taryn, 
mm -hmm. uh, with your company starts with a consultative discussion mm -hmm. yes. about what issues might be of interest. Yes. Mm -hmm. And during which I'm probably going to discover a few things about some issues I may not have thought well, of on my own. Yes, and you're absolutely right about that. Off, most times than uh -huh. not, that's what ends up happening. I'm going to call you in because I think this is going on. Usually what? that's a symptom uh -huh. of a bigger issue. And, and that, right. I think that's where you really add value because right. it's more than just a bunch of training modules that I select from. Correct. I'm getting a program of, of learning with training modules, using a library of training modules that you've developed and have proven mm -hmm. uh, to put together a program that's unique to my company to make that shift that we talked about from Absolutely. negative to positive. And it's focused very much on creating a behavioral and social shift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion is in order to really move the needle on harassment in the workplace, mm -hmm. we need to focus on workplace culture and shifting behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, last year, EEOC, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, came out with a statement, and mm -hmm. I want to mention this because it's important. Um, they said that the missing piece to effective workplace training is bystander training, bystander intervention training. Really? So what does that mean? That basically means arming people and teaching people with the necessary skills to be able to get involved when they see toxic behavior. It's not just about the victim speaking up. It's not just about the, uh, the victimizer changing their behavior. It's really a matter of taking a collective responsibility approach. Everybody mm -hmm. in the organization should play a role in that. Because if you, if you read some of the studies that are out there, it does suggest that people that get involved does sh shape human behavior. Yeah, that, see now that, actually I've been in plenty of, I'm an old guy. Are you? Unlike no, Joe, who's way younger. Well, <laughs> thank you for arguing you're with not. me, but I know better. <laughs> I'm an old guy. I know, and I, I know she is, and I appreciate her for that. Uh, I've been in meetings where I've seen people marginalized, often by executive leadership. Um, Leaders sometimes have a uh, kind of a way of picking favorites. There's some people that they talk mm -hmm. to and listen to, mm -hmm. and other people who are not part of that kind of inner circle. Yeah. That, to me, is the beginning of the kind of toxic behavior that we're talking about, because that yes. means a whole bunch of the people in the room feel like they have no voice. Yes, absolutely. And lacking that voice, bad things begin to happen. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the work that I do is, and this is important too, it's not just a matter of me going in and offer training. Mm -hmm. right? I, my ideal client is not the client that calls me up and says, I need you to go in and train these people. Right. right. It's, it's, I need to work with management to make sure that all the concepts that are taught in the training are modeled on a daily basis throughout the entire organization. Right. Right. So it's, it's a program just, over a period of time. It's, well, it's not just a program over time. It's working with management to make sure they implement well, that, the concepts that, that is are taught. Key. It's not just a matter that you want your managers or your employees to act this way. Right. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a part of the entire corporate culture. Right. So right. whoever you call in, and it better be Taryn Abrahams, whoever <laughs> you call in, uh, you've got to be willing to walk the talk yes. yourself. Yes. You, you want to become the role model that everybody looks to of this shift in behavior that you, all, that you want to create for yes. everybody. Yes, and the choices that management makes, so like you mentioned playing favorites, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There is nonverbal communication. There's a lot of studies out there to suggest the amount of co communication that's nonverbal. Mm -hmm. Some studies suggest it's up to 90%. Mm -hmm. Up to 90% of what you communicate is through your body and your actions. And it's not even actions. what comes out of your mouth. Not even what comes out so of your mouth. So if management is playing favorites, uh -huh. think about the impact right. that, that can have on all the layers of their business right. and how that's making people feel. Employee morale is, is a conversation we need to have more often. Mm -hmm. Unhappy employees is, is extremely costly to an sure, organization. Sure. So if employees are feeling mistreated, if they're fe feeling harassed, if they feel like there's toxic behavior that's not being addressed, that can lead to high absenteeism, mm. um, ineffective teams, less collaboration. Mm -hmm. And to me, less co collaboration is a direct hit on a company's bottom line. It's a, you've got a lot of people sitting around. They're more focused on working, on what the work they're doing than the results they're getting. But the relationships in the office matters. Uh, matter Absolutely. tremendously. And, and that's, that's an area where I think, uh, I think what you offer is a much more comprehensive solution than most people probably think it is. It's not about dipping your people in some kind of a treatment that when they come back out of it, you're not going to have to go to court. I mean, a lot of people say, I want to make my, I want to make my workplace litigation proof. Right. Well, that's, unfortunately, I'm not going to sit here and say that. That's not possible. I mean, the yeah. reality is stuff happens. Mm -hmm. 
the, the question is, is are you going to be prepared when that stuff are happens? You gonna be, and, right? and are you going to be, are you going to know how to deal with it? How are you going to handle it? Because you're going to have to, they have a, a company, an organization has to show they're, at least they're concerned with the issue. Right, right, exactly. So in right. the state of New Jersey, there's no written law that suggests you have to offer harassment right. training. Mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. opposed to like New York City, New York mm -hmm. State, they just created a new anti-harassment law okay. that says any company that has more than 15 employees, which is a lot of companies in New York, they have to offer interactive live, not live, excuse me, interactive harassment training, right? That is now written in the law. New Jersey, it's not a law yet. Mm -hmm. However, if your company ends up in litigation and you state that you haven't provided any sort of preventative measures, mm -hmm. That, that's going to be a um, that's, that's a factor a that weighs hit. against you exactly. when, when you're in that court. You. you need corrective okay. and preventive actions. Exactly. exactly. So Empower Behavioral Services is based in, in uh, North Jersey. North I remember Jersey. you mentioned that. Yes. So I'm sure you've got clients in New York and I do. certainly throughout North Jersey. Yep. But is that the only area you serve? I can imagine you could do this for just about anybody. I can service the entire United States mm -hmm. um, as long as you know we discuss you know in terms of travel arrangements. Right. But uh -huh. I absolutely can travel anywhere, and I really. I'm very passionate about spreading the word that I believe that this is the new way to offer training in our workplace. Mm -hmm. cool. Again, the Me Too movement. I don't want to harp too much on the Me mm -hmm. Too movement. It's but, in the news. But it's, right. about, it's, it's about learning from it mm -hmm. and, and gaining some perspective. And I believe that this movement has taught us of what we need to improve sure. in terms of training. One of the things people don't understand, I think, is that they think it's all harassment just, just for females, and it's not, is it? No, it's not. In fact, let me give you some statistics. Um, up to 85% of women mm -hmm. report mm -hmm. feeling some form of harassment in okay. the workplace. Mm -hmm. Up to 17% of men experience some form of harassment in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And 90% of victims never tell a soul. Never really? tell a soul about it. They just 90%. keep it quiet. So when you think about the impact that employee morale has on a company, mm -hmm. right, and you potentially have employees feeling victimized and unsafe in their workplace, think about the effect that that can have on a business. Absolutely. Sure. You know? and, and, and when you have to answer embarrassing questions in front of a judge, all that silence oh. does not work for you. Right. Absolutely not. The Absolutely fact that not. nobody feels safe to talk about it so, actually comes up in the court case. So Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So a lot of the work that I do um, with my clients is, is creating a workplace culture that rejects cultures of silence. Yeah. We really want to create an environment where people feel comfortable to report that there's no fear of retaliation. And mm -hmm. that's part of the culture is we want you to come report. Right. And it's not, import it's not enough to just say report to HR. There needs to be multiple escalation paths to give people an opportunity to speak up. They may not feel comfortable with the HR manager. Right, exactly. yeah. It could be the HR manager doing the harassing. You just don't know. So mm -hmm. there needs to be multiple places and people to speak to. Yeah, that's great. We, we need to take a break. Uh, you're, what you're talking about here, Taryn, it's, it's interesting to me, is mm -hmm. building an infrastructure, essentially, of emotional support yes. uh, that has to start at the top of an organization. Yes. It can't just be dropped on people. It's got to be built from within. Exactly. And you've got a very unique background to offer about where you come from. It's, uh, you've yes. got a, and we definitely want to hear about that. When we come back after this break on CEO Chat, we'll start with where you come from on this. Right, thank you. It's such a great story. Stick we'll around. We'll be right back. We're, we're, stick around. What'd you tell them to do? Stick around. We'll make sure you do. Yeah. We'll be back in uh, just a minute after these messages. Not a problem. Yeah. yeah. Choosing Medicare coverage can be a very confusing and complicated process. Help is just a phone call away, 856-226-4800. As a licensed insurance agent, I'll assist you in making an informed and confident decision on a Medicare plan that meets your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Call me today for a free, no obligation, Medicare benefits consultation, 856-226-4800. Boardwalks built for fun. Legendary rock and roll clubs. This is how we do it. Casinos by the ocean. Now that's New Jersey. 130 miles of beautiful beaches. Solid rock. And everything in between. <laughs> now that's New Jersey. Burlington County College. Is now Rowan College at Burlington County. 
Still the same great faculty. At a community college ranked top 50 in the nation. Basically, we earn more and pay less. RCBC students are accepted at Rowan University after graduation. And get a bachelor's degree for around $30,000. Online and Mount Laurel students get a 15% Rowan University tuition discount. And at many scholarship opportunities. So you earn more and pay even less. Rowan College of Burlington County. Your path to success. They are the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen. Welcome back to CEO Chat. And who were you? I am Joe Osamendi. <laughs> Joey A, as, a, as I go. hear. Uh, <laughs> Al Cini, it's, yeah, it's a pleasure meeting you. Always a pleasure. It's a pleasure meeting you, especially around the holidays. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we're meeting again for the first time after two years of working together doing this. <laughs> yeah, right. so we're almost on three. We're starting our third year in yeah, January. I know. Great. Seems like an eternity. And, uh, you know, we've talked to hundreds of guests, and right. none of them more interesting than Taryn Abrahams. Right. And, yeah. uh, Taryn, in the, in the first segment, we talked about the change in culture that you can help a company create. Mm -hmm. Uh, with a kind of a unique consultative approach that you've developed. It's more than just training. It's about almost coaching and uh, working with everybody at every level. Mm -hmm. and you, but your background is not HR. No, it's not. What did you, where, where, where do you come from, Karen <laughs> Abrahams? So my professional journey started as a marriage and family therapist. Uh -huh. okay. I have a master's degree in marriage and family therapy, and I was in the clinical space for well over a decade. That's the MFT, I guess, That's the uh, MFT at the end of your name. Of okay. name. Right, uh -huh. right. And a lot of people aren't familiar with those letters, so I'm glad that you bring that up. Uh -huh. um, and I and you know, I went through a career change. I decided to move into the corporate space, mm -hmm. and I was in business development and sales for many years, and I realized that my clinical background actually gave me quite an edge in business. Oh, sure. Okay, sure. Um, just understanding people about a, a lot deeper, understanding um, you know the psyche behind the buyer. You know, there's a, that there's a lot that goes into that. Mm -hmm. um, but I started to realize that it wasn't really um, as much as I was successful at it. It wasn't something I was extremely passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I mm. really started to start see a huge need to revamp workplace training. I was that end user that was sent that link mm -hmm. to please complete this harassment training within 30 days. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you right now, I would log on, because I always worked out of my home. I'd mm -hmm. log on, go do two loads of laundry, mm -hmm. and when I hear the quiz pop up, I come back to the computer, answer the few questions that really anybody can answer, mm -hmm. and that was it. And that was training. And that, that was, was my training, training right? right? Uh -huh. I learned nothing from it. It wasn't interactive. I wasn't held any accountable. It, you know, I couldn't ask any questions. It was really... Sure. Um, Pretty boring uh, and dry, to be quite thing. honest, yeah. right, and outdated. Uh -huh. right. Um, so and your company could check you off. Exactly, right. and that's basically what that's for. Mm -hmm. That's a box checker. Mm -hmm. right. um, but there really wasn't any thought-provoking conversations. There were no aha moments. There was, there was nothing really in that content that taught me anything new. Mm -hmm. um, so with the Me Too movement, I really started to feel that there's, been, there's a really deep need to create better trainings, better experiences, and update the content to reflect some of the modern issues that our workplaces are experiencing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and uh, you know, uh, that richer view of the world is one of the things that makes you different from your competition. So uh, engaging Taryn Abrahams isn't just about coming up with a solution to check off that your right. people have been inoculated. Right. Mm -hmm. It's that what you really want is to be able to demonstrate by going way deeper than that, it, it, that you really yes. made the difference you wanted to make. Absolutely, to create real long-term sustainable change. Right. That's mm -hmm. what it's about. Right. It's not about just providing a Band-Aid. Right. And I really believe that those WebEx trainings are designed to just focus on compliance, right. check the box, and sort of be a Band-Aid. Mm -hmm. Yes, we trained our staff, but what are they really walking away with it? What are they really walking away with? Not, yeah, not, nothing, not much. absolutely nothing. I mean, right. they're really not changing at all. Right. But they just know that there's something they're not supposed to do. But they, right. they maybe learn that. Right. But that doesn't necessarily, unless you internalize those exactly. behavioral changes, you're Ex going to engage in that behavior anyway. Exactly. And to me, effective training isn't just about talking about what's not appropriate. Right. right. But it's also about talking about what is appropriate, what mm -hmm. is okay. I mean, men ask me all the time, is it okay to tell a woman that she looks pretty in her suit? Right. Of course that's okay. Mm -hmm. But men are afraid to even say that. They're, af they're freaked out 
fr quite frankly, yeah, right. um, to, to even compliment a woman on how she looks or collaborate with her over a business lunch one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Um, we even have a vice president that made a bold statement that said that, you know, we shouldn't go for lunch. I, I, I don't want to quote him, no. sure. um, but he did make a comment that suggests that men shouldn't be alone with women in the workplace over a business lunch. You know, so, and, and what I want to say about that is when you avoid people based on gender, that's a form of discrimination. Well, that's a form of discrimination. That's no different than not wanting it's, to collaborate with someone from a specific cultural group. Right. You don't so, want to create a gulag. Right, You know, exactly. where people are just terrified of everything. Exactly. And, uh, what am I, oh my God, if I say this, is somebody going to hear me and am I going to get in trouble? And let's face it, that fear is re real. Yeah. That is a real right. fear. And that's where I feel our trainings need to be equipped to handle those conversations mm -hmm. and have better conversations about what is appropriate, what is not appropriate, so that we can get back to business. Okay. Now, now the, full, the full range of everything you do is we, we spend some time on the Me Too movement. It's in the news and it's a big issue. Yes. And I guess gender issues are probably the larger aspect mm -hmm. of the population, but there's also diversity training. Yes. I mean, that's still important, even though Absolutely. people may not have been talking about it so much. Yes. And how we respect each other despite... I don't want to say despite her, how we celebrate our differences and yet work together. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's a big part of who we want to be and, and what we want to become. So and interpersonal issues in the workplace is a conversation we're not talking much about. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's 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 part of that whole conversation about harassment. Right. Uh -huh. um, you know, uh, there's a lot of personalities that go on in the office and no one is immune. Um, really, it's important to recognize that it's, it's, it's important to take care of our people. You take care of your people, mm -hmm. you take care of your business. We well, have to make sure people are just wanting to go beyond compliance. That's the main thing. That so is, that's yes. it. I mean, go that deeper way. than compliance. Yes. Deeper conversations. Yeah, we got people out there that own companies. It could be any size company, two or three people, all the way up to thousands mm -hmm. of people. They have these issues, and they want to call somebody who will go deep with them and not just spray training at their mm -hmm. people. Right. Um, right. What does an engagement with Taryn Abrahams feel like? How does it start? What's the first thing we do? Great. So that's a great question. So it starts with a phone conversation <clears throat> to kind of get a sense of what your immediate needs are. Mm -hmm. um, I always like to then take that into a live conversation because I oftentimes mm -hmm. believe that sometimes what they're coming to me with is really a symptom of a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. So it's really my job to sort of have a fact-finding conversation about the history of the company, the culture of the company, their values, their missions, where they're going, what their goals are, mm -hmm. so that I make sure to make you know to tailor the training to their specific needs. Right. Okay. Um, then from there, I, I provide a comprehensive proposal, and and then from there we, we get started. And it's and I look at my relationships with my clients as partnerships. Okay. Okay. These are these are not just clients. These are partnerships. We work collaboratively together. Um, I am available throughout the year if you want to engage me and in, in, if you have an employee that perhaps is um, displaying some toxic behavior but maybe not grounds for termination, uh -huh. I can be that trusted advisor, that third party um, consultant, if mm -hmm. you will, um, to help you smooth over some of those issues in the workplace. That's, right. that's really important. Are we taking a break or are we wrapping it up? Wrap it up? Okay. I, you, it's the fastest wow. 24 minutes wow. we've ever spent. <laughs> I can think of a thousand questions to ask you uh, because it's yeah. such a great topic yeah. and you're obviously an expert in this field. It's, uh, so you and I are going to keep talking anyway uh, because uh, I think it's, it's such a great subject and you've got such a unique slant on it. Uh, people out there who want to build a more positive culture, not just necessarily solve litigation problems, but make their workplace a better workplace. Right need to be calling you and now what we want you to do is look in your camera and tell everybody how to do that. Absolutely. So please give me a call at 973-803-8276 or you can email me at info at empowerbehavioralservices.com. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Instagram. Um, there's multiple ways you can get a hold of me. Um, but just take that first step, reach out to me and I would love to consult with you to figure out what your needs are. You've got a lot to offer. I've looked at your website. You can learn a lot just by browsing the yes. EmpowerBehavioralServices.com website. Yes, and empower, thank you. My, and my website, <laughs> www.EmpowerBehavioralServices.com. Great, you great website. And thank you, Jonathan Rosen, mm -hmm. for making this introduction. And you're a Collaborex member. Yes. Jonathan is... Uh, Highly recommend Collaborex yeah. if you're looking It's a, a great model. But, uh, thank you so much for joining thank us on you. CEO Chat, Taryn. It was yeah. a pleasure talking to you. And thanks, all of you, for joining us for this enlightening episode of CEO Chat. My name is Al Sini. Joe Asamendi. And we'll be back again in about a half an hour yeah. with another episode of CEO Chat. We'll see Stick you around. Then. We'll see you then. Thank you.